What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's good? What's good? What's good? Out here covering another legend, all time great. A recommendation from CP Goat number three and a list of you know classic players so appreciate this one all right we're here with bob lanier now i'm not gonna sit here and make stuff up and try to lie i don't know a whole lot about bob lanier i'll be honest and really the first time i heard his name getting like brought up consistently is when he passed away uh i want to say last year and then, you know, he popped up on ESPN, you know, remembering Bob Lanier, da da da. But I, I can't say that I've heard his name mentioned too many times before he passed away, where people mentioning him. And which is really sad considering that he is one of the greatest big men to ever play the game of basketball. But sometimes, if you don't have a personality that sticks out that keeps you relevant, and you haven't won a championship, uh, people will often uh, fade you out, seems seems to be. And to be a prolific big back in his time, when that's all there was, was prolific bigs. And for you to be one of the best ones out there speaks volumes to how great Bob Lanier was. But like I said, I don't know a whole lot about the guy and his career. I know that he's one of the greats. I know that uh, he played with the Detroit Pistons and the Milwaukee Bucks. I know that he never won a championship. I know that um, he was one of those bigs that had to deal with the knee injuries. So... He, I believe when he came into the NBA, he was already uh, coming off of a knee surgery. And from what I've heard is that he shouldn't have even been playing his first NBA season. He should have sat out and focused on rehabbing his knee. But there was so much pressure from the Detroit Pistons that he played that entire season with a, with a rehabbing knee and from what I heard is that he was in pain. His knees were hurting every single game. And he said he had no business playing that year as rookie year. He should have sat out. And on top of that, because he wasn't he wasn't even in basketball shape, because during the offseason, all he was doing was rehabbing his knee. He wasn't doing any kinds of activities. So he wasn't even in basketball shape, and he's out here laboring. And still uh, had a great rookie season. But... From what it sounds like is that the his knee probably would have been in better shape because this, this knee apparently plagued him through his entire career. But had he just rehabbed appropriately, took the first year off, there's a there's there's a good chance that his knees may not have been as problematic for the rest of his career. I know that he was generally considered one of those enforcer kind of players, uh, big guy. Um, and you know how the, the atmosphere was back in the day. I mean, throwing hands, getting in fights, getting in brawls was kind of the norm. And you would rarely get ejected from the game. Sometimes you just get assessed uh, some kind of foul, you know. But um, he was one of those guys that that throw hands. I read that he even, he he laid out uh, Bill Lambert, if I'm not mistaken. I hadn't, I hadn't seen the footage, or at least knowingly seen the footage of him laying out Bill. If I'm wrong, correct me in the, in the comment section. But the, from, what, from what I hear, this guy was a tough SOB, a tough SOB. And I can't really sit here and talk about his game, like his skill sets. I mean, I can have a general idea, given he's a big man that played, uh, you know, in the 70s through the 80s, like 1970, 1984. I think he had... Uh, had 14 seasons, but uh, I, I, I can't, but that's why I'm going to, you know, watch these highlights so I can have a better understanding of the type of player that uh, he was. But just a quick rundown on his, uh, you know, accolades and 
uh, information. Uh, came out of college at St. Bonaventure. Drafted in 1970, first round with the first overall pick, as you know, by the Detroit Pistons. Uh, like I said, played 14 years, 1970 through 1984, uh, with the Pistons for 10 years, 1970 through 1980, and then with the Milwaukee Bucks from 80 to 84, four years with the Bucks. Um, he was also a coach, coached the Golden State Warriors as an assistant and an interim head coach. Uh, he was an eight-time NBA All-Star, Mr. Bob Lanier was. NBA All-Star Game MVP, NBA All-Rookie First Team. But like I said, no championships or anything like that. For his totals on his career, 19,248 points for an average of 20.1 points per game, 9,698 rebounds for a total of 10 rebounds, 10.1 rebounds per game. I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> oh, bless you. And uh, blocks, 1,100 blocks exactly for 1.5 blocks per game. Um, his ten, his first ten years in the NBA. I'm looking at, I'm looking at his numbers now. His first ten years in the NBA were quite impressive, and it's even more impressive considering that that rookie year he averaged 15 points, eight rebounds, on on a, on rehabbing a knee after surgery while being out of shape. Highly impressive, but his first ten years were solid. By his second year, by sophomore year. He averaged 25.7 points per game and 14.2 rebounds. That 25.7 would be a career high on a points average. And then the next season after that, he followed up with a 23.8 with a 14.9, almost 15 rebounds per game. Now, y'all know how it was. Blocks weren't counted back so early on. So the first record we have of him accumulating blocks per game was his fourth season, and he averaged three blocks per game. Phenomenal, man. Phenomenal. His 10-year stretch was solid. Just looking at the, the points and rebounds, starting from his rookie year, 15.6 and 8, 25.7 and 14, 23.8 and damn near 15, 22.5 and 13, 24, 12, 21, 11, 25, 11, 24, 11, 23, 9.3, 21, 10. And then after that, when he got to the Milwaukee Bucks, his his productivity dipped a little bit. Uh, was no longer averaging those wonderful you know, double doubles. His rebounding uh, dropped. But uh, to to be uh, under uh, what's the word I want to use? Understandably so. Understandably so. So I'm trying to say. Understandably so, considering that his role changed. He was in the last four years of his career. The knees were aging quick, quickly, quickly, especially given his size and his history with his bill of health with his knees. And he was playing 10 less minutes a game with the Milwaukee Bucks than what he was doing when his younger days with the Detroit Pistons. So uh, a whole new role, a whole new dynamic. But I remember one thing that uh, Lanier said is that he wished he was playing, because when he got to Milwaukee Bucks, he was playing with Marquise uh, Johnson, Sidney Moncrief. Uh, what's that guy? What's that guy's name? The other guy. I can't remember. But he had a better cast with him than he had in the Detroit Pistons. I remember I read, he was like, man, I just, I wish I would have played with these guys when I was younger. Who knows what could have happened, but it is what it is. But like I said, that's just some of the stuff I've heard and I've read about Bob Lanier. But like I said, I've never knowingly watched video footage of him. If I've seen video footage of Bob Lanier, it was watching highlights of some other great that he was playing against. And I had no clue. I probably didn't even know who, who you know who he was or um, even were able to identify him, right? So this is my first time knowingly investing in Bob Lanier in some type of highlight reel. Let me see what his game was about. Let's get into it. Part one, right post and All right. This is a much more lighthearted crowd now after hearing the announcement by President Nixon. They're really getting with it here now, and Archibald helped reignite them. Chet nice Lundgren move. Coming in as That's a Bob big guy. That was a really big guy. Chris Ford against the shot clock. Gives over to Everhart. Back to Chris Ford. Here is the big guy. Double team. Gets inside. Left nice hand left hand. Look. Tap it in. Four points for George Johnson and a 48-40 to 40 lead for Golden State. 106 to play in the first half. That's and a big going boy. To the and getting the hoop, and he was fouled on the play. That cuts the Golden State lead to six. Bob Lanier now with 16 points. 
Okay, here's Lanier with great position inside, and his body is so big that you just can't get up close to him. But the story about Wilbur Holland will tell you about it. He was given up twice by Atlanta. And signed as a free agent here. Nine and a half minutes to go, five to four. Detroit leading. Bro, he got he got that joint down pat. Now Detroit trying to cut the gap down to ten again. Eric Money with it. Detroit led in the first quarter by eight. Then it was tied. That's Lanier making his move. Fouled in the act of shooting the basket pass. That's the man. Air ball away, and here comes Detroit again after tying the game at 60 and Lanier's jumper. We're now up at 60. Lanier going right to the basket in the third quarter. No, he got those knee pads on. I feel him. I got knee problems too. I used to always have my knee pads on. Friend, I threw him in practice yesterday. Really? On that. Yep. Here's Thompson. One drive baseline. Julius got there first. Ooh, good footwork. Ooh, good swing through motion. Clean, man. Two turnovers now against Chicago. None so far for Detroit. Bob Lanier. Lanier has broadcast here in the second quarter in Detroit. And the Pistons were leading throughout the first quarter. Now have found themselves in a buzzsaw. As Lanier tries is that? To get things inside and does. And beats Artis Gilmore underneath. Is that? Ar I was about to say, is that Artis Gilmore? Yeah, that's Artis Gilmore. shot, and you wonder about the uh, validity of him shooting it, but he gets it done every time. Four to Lanier. Good move. And Lanier Good now move. is picking up the tempo. He started. Lanier doesn't want to challenge Elmore Smith right now. Now he beats him with a fake. The Pistons with three straight wins. Go down low to Bob Lanier. Nice touch off the glass, man. Fighting for position. Sealed him off. Good stuff. Good to see you, Norm. Danny Hawkins goes to Oscar Robertson inside to Bob Lanier. Ooh. Faded the one. Faded the other guy on the pump fake. 7%. Then they came out in the third quarter and really got hot. Curtis Rowe with the ball. Detroit down by two. Here's the big man, Lanier, with the ball. Puts it up off glass and ties the game. That's a dangerous big man. Especially he can shoot the little mid-range just outside the box comfortably, too. Like that, yeah. Big big guy? Mm-hmm. No hesitation. Part two, left block scoring. George Trapp. Wearing number 31 and Willie Norwood, number 8, at the other four. As Rowe and Adams sit down. Here's Lanier. Got it. It's a tough shot. Ray was an excellent. Cooking people with that left hand. Cooking them with that left hand hook, Adams, boy. Junior year. Time with the Cleveland Cavaliers, averaging over 19 points a game. Lanier. In my experience, Mendy, that oftentimes the team that hits first in the overtime goes on to win it. Lanier puts it up. The boys, a double team. Good baseball pass by Irving, wasn't it? Anybody that says that these players don't care if they win or lose, you turn a camp there by David Thompson. Oh. And score. Oh, and then on Dr. J. Going to Miss Myers. I would imagine Costello might try Kevin Rastani before long. He has not been in this game. Here's Lanier inside. Too oh, easy. Too easy. Too easy. Right down to the wire. You can sense it. You can smell it. You can see it in their players' eyes. Uh, Lanier with a great. Mm. Hey, Ooh, got off the ooh. Hey, you see Julius. Hell of a move. Dude, mid range game. The West now with eleven minutes to go here in the first half. Buckets. Yeah. Two minutes and 25 seconds. Mark hits Lanier at the free throw line. Comes back up with his left hand and shot. Oh, and a push there. Back to Chris Ford. Ford. South ball, baby. Ball. Back to Chris who's outside. Improves his position. Has it knocked away by Junior Bridgman. Bob Shoot. Lanier outside. Hits it. Great up, range up. for a big man. He and Bob Mack. Not too long that particular play. Bob McAdoo. Here's Lanier who gets the shot. He'll get that all. It's another guy we got to cover. Bob McAdoo. First time I heard of Bob McAdoo was in 1998. Lead to Lanier. They 
Comfortable, man. Glass. Driving game. Come on, has a nine point lead over Washington at the half. LA has won five straight. Lanier. Up to Eric Money. Lead to Lanier, and the big guy heads to the hoop. Nice. Anticipated and was able to get to it earlier, much like Russell used to do. Bob Lanier. And Irving on the floor for Dick Mata in the East. Tough shot. Anyway, 9.55. Here is Al Everhard back to Chris Ford. Gary Brokaw, who's been red hot, gives him up to Brian Winters, and here comes Lanier. Lanier moves up with a shot off the glass, and now let's go one back. game, and James led them on Friday night against Portland. Other than that, Robinson or Maravich, always the main man. Lanier down the lane with that finger roll. Just too many single player this year. Winning basket in the last two minutes for the Sonics. Keenan gives it up. Run down by Lanier. Ooh. Dude. That was lightning quick. Considering his size. Jeez, he just blew by him. Damn. I felt that. Deep catches and cuts. Both these teams get two or three shots. Who you get in trouble? Johnny Hawkins and Lanier has two quick field goals. He's up for that jump shot. It's very, very difficult to block because he shoots it from so way back on his head. Still a five-point lead. Wide open to Lanier. Elmore Smith was off of him. He was like they've been together for three or four months. Amphie Russell played his high school basketball less than two miles away. Pass back by Mary. Quick move. <laughs> charge but when he reached in that committed himself Ford whirling and getting it inside to Lanier Lanier's first two of the afternoon the last time these two blocking it away from the much bigger Merriweather now Ford trying to get it inside batted away money picks it up big scramble Lanier comes out with the ball and two points PNR game for Connie Hawkins look at the size of those hands holding that ball back to Bob Lanier mm. Nine minutes and five seconds to go in the third quarter. Eric Money is shut off at the pass by Big Elmore Smith. That's the league record. Ties the league record. That's right. Roger Brown had 53 a couple years ago, and Irving did this year. Here's Bob Lanier going in to lay the Super, ball. Super, isn't it? All these great restaurants. Mater's, Sally's, the banquet last night. He got a terrific time. Barry now back to Lanier. Outside. Killing those pick and rolls. Maravich has scored six. Ford to Lanier. Running one hander by Lanier is good. He has such a offensive boards. In a contest that was won by the Warriors in Detroit by 30. And in this game, Clifford Ray has scored 13 points. That is Lanier. He's going to try and contain it. He gets an Oscar award on that one. Let's see it as a basket count. And Archie Clark loses George Thompson with that quick step. Rebound to Lanier. Dr. J was in the air and got a piece of it. A foul be against the being doubled up. Smith is playing him tight. Russell or whoever's out there near him is quick to front him. They're all slapping the ball with Lanier has it. Big guy. Quick. Catch it right back up. Keep the ball high. Don't bring the ball down. Lanier offensive board. Lanier back up. Humate heads to the basket. Puts it up over Jones, but not enough there. Lanier gets the rebound in side court. Butter. Alley pass to Ford, who gets inside at the lot. Winner's all over, and here's Curtis Rowe. Up with a right-handed hook. Lanier with an easy offensive board. Elmore Smith's got to push it. And the Pistons are still alive. Money comes racing out of the backcourt. 
Lanier with a rebound. 96-93. Color coverage from awesome Pebble Beach of the Bing Crosby Pro-Am. All that on Saturday, ABC. Tony Hawkins' shot was rebounded by Bob Lanier. Led by nine at the end of the first quarter. Here is Clark driving out to Havlicek. Followed up by Bob Lanier. Third quarter at four at the half. Lanier goes to Eric Money looking inside. He's been a dancer all night going right into that lane. But can't get the shot. Lanier is there. Followed up. Two-point game. Rest in peace. Uh... You know, I'm watching this from a YouTube channel called 70s Fan. Uh, great basketball content here. As, as you can see, a lot of rare footage, and I really like the breakdown on different parts of his game. Let me show you how versatile he was. Let me show you how many ways he could do it. Uh, man, yeah, that beast, beast. I'm glad I watched that. I'm, I'm glad I seen that. Uh, killing him with that left hand, man. That sweeping hook, big body. And then he really caught me off guard with that boom, fake, and just burst of speed first step blow by jam i was like "Ooh, you moving like that it seems like to me that he's a very high uh obviously i feel like most of the times anybody that's sustains greatness that long has some kind of a high iq basketball player but just watching it uh you know he, he knows how to operate with his point guards he's crafty the footwork is there, the, the body control, back to the basket game and face up game and shooting mid range. Sheesh. That's a big guy. Monster. Rebounding. Going, and I love, uh, you see, the fundamentals for bi what bigs we do have in the game now. Um, every time. Not every time, but so many times I've seen, maybe over the last 15 years of basketball in the NBA, that a lot of these bigs, they, they grab a rebound, and they like to bring it all the way down like they're, they're spring-loaded, just to go back up, to put it back up. But no, catch the ball high, keep the ball high, and go right back up with it. They, they like to go down. Then you got those smaller players around you swiping down with the ball out of your hand. Half the time, they're probably going to hit your, your hand and your wrist, but they're not going to call that. Keep the ball high. That was something Dwight Howard, I felt like, didn't do enough. He Dwight Howard always liked to come all the way down and then come back up instead of just keeping the ball high. Andrew Bynum was really good at keeping the ball high. And the, the competition for bigs back then, man. Like, man, it was tough. It was tough. And it was like that for, you know, a handful of decades in the NBA where the big men were prominent. And it was like every other day, if not every day, you were going against a quality big man. If not an all-star, something close to it. Nowadays, we, we really only got two, like, really all-star caliber big men, and that's Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid. With all due respect to the ones I did not mention, but the only time you're going to have this classic... I'm not throwing Anthony Davis in there, sorry. And he don't even like playing center anyway. He don't even like playing center. He doesn't like the contact. But you just really look forward to the Joel Embiid-Joker matchup. After that, they, they they ain't really playing any really quality centers, bigs. Anyway, that's all I got to say about it. CP, GOAT number three, appreciate this one. I really do enjoy uh, going back in history and seeing some of these guys play, learning about them, see what they were doing in the uh, great eras of the past. Because, hey, it's one thing here at Boot TV, man. We gon' we gon' we gonna pay homage to all the greats, players that people forget, the players that people don't know about, and uh, we're not with uh, tearing these guys down. They're they're not firemen. They're not plumbers, despite what some bums like to think. All right, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Let me know what you think about it. If you can let me know some more Bob Lanier information, let me know in the comment section. Y'all know I read these comments. I reply to as much as I can. So I'm definitely reading your stuff. And I, I want the information. So take care. Be blessed. And I'll catch you on the next one. We out, baby.